Next, we have Kirik Pico um, with an awesome submission. Sound up for the first viewing, and then we will turn it off afterwards. Let's go. <laughs> It is. Oh, sorry. All right. Who? And he's in chat. Thank you for joining us. Beautiful work. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Who is up? Uh, I'll say some things about it. I guess I got to stop going first now. Be like Lana. <laughs> um, I mean, this is it's it's very cool, well executed. Like the choreography is neat. Like the idea is neat. The presentation is like extremely extremely high um i think when watching it like the only thing that really stood out to me was this po like this sort of action here in this pose in that everywhere else in this the posing is so clear and the silhouettes like you can like draw a line around the whole thing and everything is like out in silhouette in ways that feel so dynamic and appealing in like every way like there's almost nothing interrupting like the you know the internal silhouette uh th there's very little points in this animation where anything's like overlapping and because of that even though it's very fast it's all like super readable you can track every part of the body through the entire thing until you get to this pose where it's all like internal silhouette overlapping each other and of course, I mean, in the actual animation, what you see and read is like the highest contrast point, you know, because of the, the coloring of this blade. But I feel like if this whole pose was just rotated like 20 degrees this way, so you saw like a little gap in the arm, maybe like one of these knees coming out and this blade just like a little bit further over here so you could kind of like understand the length of it it would just shine like a tiny, tiny bit more. Um, and it only stands out because it's like the only place in the animation where you do this kind of do this kind of pose. Like, I mean, it's it's not even that it's like bad necessarily. It's just that, that almost like stylistically throughout the rest of the animation, there's nothing else like it. And so when it happens, it makes this pose kind of stand out in it because of that. So, uh, you know, I do really like though that um, you're using like color to draw the eye as well as part of the animation. I mean, like the it, the 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 way you're doing like the color sh shifts here really adds to the impact. You know, it goes from like white to inverse to back and what you're seeing is almost like illustratively, you know, like it's like almost like an illustration where you're seeing like the, the impact is like extra because you're drawing my eye to this highest contrast glowing point here. And that's true th a lot throughout the animation where like the highest, uh, uh, the highest point of contrast is also the thing you want me to look at. And so it's like an interesting thing that like you can, even on top of your animations, you know, and they do this a lot in film, obviously, you can use like color and contrast to like draw the eye in a way that the animation itself can't do just by itself. Um, you know, we talk a lot about like drawing the viewer's eye to what you want them to see. And sometimes that's just hard to do with the animation alone and, you know, using all the tools available to you if you can, like color and lighting um, are tools that a lot of these entries didn't take advantage of. And I understand that it's like, it's freaking hard to do <laughs> all that extra work. It's hard to make like an animation and then also make it look like an illustration, but you are missing out on some of the tools available to you from like a cinematic perspective if you don't dip into some of those other tools, so. Mm -hmm. I do gotta, uh, just pursuant to the silhouette thing, I do gotta call out just the one moment, uh, the, the elephant tangent in the room right here. <laughs> Um, you know, motion pose is great, but just, ah, I wish it was separated. Um, but that's, you know, I know that's a little, but that, that's, that's the one thing that stands out too from that. And I immediately saw it. I feel like the, mm. even on like first read through, that was like the one thing that everybody immediately saw about this is, is that one moment, um, like him just being like this much to the left. 
Perfect. Yeah, this might be cool. extremely personal, but my eyes are very sensitive to flashes, and there are a lot of really bright full screen flashes. And I scrubbing through this, I can't do it. I can't watch it multiple times like I could other animations. Like I said, that might be very personal, but just something to keep in mind. Hmm. That's a really good note. Yeah. Hmm. General accessibility of your animation, I think, could be really important. Good call out, Tyler. I'll just go really quick because I have just a few tiny thoughts, but just in case anyone else wants to talk, because we're going to speed this up a bit. I really think this is just all out awesome. Like, there's so much shit going on. It's just like, you know, next level. But I feel this pose at the end here, it just bugs me because it's just kind of pushed a little bit too far. And like, it feels like he's almost holding himself up instead of like standing cool. And the way you can solve that is just by, you know, toning it down just a little bit, or maybe, you know, maybe doing an A-shaped pose here instead. Um, just so it doesn't look as like uncomfortable almost because it's really good when you push the w push the waist out and you go for that like dynamic pose but I feel that it's just pushed a little bit too much here and it almost feels like at any point he's just kind of gonna fall over um, that's just kind of my opinion and that's kind of the only thing personally that I thought was just a little bit off you've got to kind of know when you're pushing the pose a little bit too much and I feel this one is just pushed a tiny bit too much and that he's almost sort of about to fall over um, but overall like just all out the way this is composed, the way the camera works married to the action, the camera shakes. It's just really nice. And this little zoom in here on this landing. It's so great. It's like really, really well done. Yeah. The one uh, small thing I was going to say is about this same moment. Um, it'd be good to get a little bit of a breathing idol in here. We get a little bit of just like this head and shoulder action moving back and forth there. And it doesn't feel dead because the background's moving. Um, but because you're sort of going into this very, very static uh, idle pose, this is also like the one moment that I see like everything kind of stops moving and his hips and booty like really like landing that hit. But I really notice how separate from his body that that booty pop up motion is here, specifically in those in the hips. It uh, feels like a little bit like goop, just a, just that one last thing. So maybe if he was going into like, like like one last little breath before like fully relaxing or something, I wouldn't notice it as much. But because everything else is kind of slowing to a halt, I'm like that booty has a mind of its own, and that's that's the only moment that I, that I really notice. <laughs> I had a small thing at the start rather than the end. Uh... Some of this felt a little rushed. Like I feel like I wanted more time on when he looks. Like even just two frames. It's like huh, huh. it's like everything's like huh, huh. it's like everything happens so quickly, you know? It's like I just wanted like an extra two frames at this point, maybe. It's like as soon as he sees it, he's straight into this. And also this pose is a bit off to me. It's a bit like everything's just like his hands and his hips are all very in line and they stay in line from like here. And then they come down together too. There's no offset with the arms or anything. So maybe just it feels a little bit too too tight to me. Maybe that's just me, but it would have been nice to have a little bit of overlap as he comes down on the arms and then it swoops into the next part. Um, it just get, hits this pose and it's just not really sure. It's not really a pose I've seen before <laughs> in the air. Um, yeah, yeah, so maybe just spacing that out a little bit more so it wasn't so rushed. Uh, but overall, yeah, like everyone else said, it's great. Love it. I love that distortion on that weapon up there, too. It's really, really yeah. slick way to, oh, to this help. Bit. Yeah, this, to help. This weapon feels so cool. If I'm not mistaken, Purik, I think you also rigged this character. Um, oh, sorry. Who was I stealing that from? Oh, sorry, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, this end hit, I love that, like, you've added wobble to the bottom and the top separately. Like, it's not like it's moving around. It's not like his hand is, is wobbling. It's like the just the reverb through the weapon feels so good on that hit. Like, I feel like I never want another weapon that like I'm doing the, the, the re you did the sculpt as well. Oh my gosh. Wow. Triple threat. Okay. Crazy. Beautiful. <laughs> wow. Um, That's wild. Really amazing work. I'm going to keep it moving. Pure Pico, everybody rats in chat. Amazing work. Amazing yeah. work. Super Holy dope. Schmucks. Love it.